All right, so this is the last book that I'm going to make now, the last video for this today. Um, the most beautiful thing is the book that we are reading, the last book. My grandmother is so old. No one knows how old she is. Not me, not my big sister, Dobby, not our old cousin, Lee. My father waits patiently when we try to guess her age. He is my grandma's ninth and youngest child, and even he does not know how old she is. We know that my grandma was born on the other side of the world, across a wide ocean. My grandma came from a time and a place where creatures lurked in the jungle, waiting to chase unwanted children. She told us that she once looked into the grooming eyes of a tiger and felt it hot breath on her face. By the time I was born, my grandmother already had an older woman face. Her skin was soft but dry like paper, and in her mouth was a single tooth. Grandma said it is the only thing standing strong in my mouth, this final tooth that my mother and father gave me. I asked to see a picture of her parents. She said, me and Nibba, they lived in a time long before the hungmen learned of such things as photographs. She pointed to her heart. The only picture I have of them is here. The luckiest of the grandchildren got to help take care of Grandma. Lee got to wash Grandma's clothes by hand at the bathroom sink with sweet-smelling pink soap. Dobby got to wash Grandma's soft brown black in the bathtub with a soapy cloth. And me, I got to clip her fingernails and toenails while Grandma sat on her favorite stool in the light from the window. I can still feel the roughness of Grandma's heels in my hand, the thickness of her toenails in between my fingers. I can see the bottoms of her feet, the thick and brown and broken deep cracks filled with dirt from long ago and far away. Ew. Grandma told me that her mother and father died when she was a little girl. Grandma was just a child herself, but she had to take care of her two younger brothers and baby sister. I look up at my grandma from the place where I sat at her feet and I ask her, how did you get food for them? Grandma said, I didn't find enough food. We lived always with hunger, eating us on the inside. All my life with her, even with just her on one tooth, grandma never said no when we offered her something to eat. The ice cream truck was singing its song from down the streets. I looked underneath the couch for a quarter. There were none. So I got ice cream, ice cubes from the freezer. I offer one to grandma in my red plastic cup. She smiled at me. <coughs> When I wanted a new dress to wear on the first day of third grade, my mother said she did not have enough money. She found some napkins and a dime in her purse and offered them to me. I brought her I bought hard peppermint candies from the neighborhood groceries at the corner of our block. When I got home, I offered one to grandma on the palm of my hand. She smiled at me. At the round table with its shiny, with its shaky legs, I used my spoon to mix and mix in the center soup bowl we all shared. There was no pieces of meat, only bones and soft greens. My father said the pieces of meat is too expensive at the market, me niba. I found a thick chunk of bone and offered it to grandma on my spoon. She smiled at me. We had plenty of meat only when we celebrate Hong Kong New Year with our aunts, uncles, and cousins. The other old table was heavy with whole boiled chickens, more than our family could ever eat. After dinner, our bellies full. My cousin and I sat on the carpet around Grandma as she told us stories. She always began, if I, it was a long time ago and I was just a girl. 
As we listened, our eyes grew round. Grandma's twenty twirled her fingers one over the other to show us what the hands of Pung Jungung jungle spirit the size of children look like. She taught us how to listen for the cries of the famous Ping Mignon boys by holding our breath until our hearts pounded in our ears. We are always sad when Aunt Ching called time for the children to help clean up. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing some of these words correctly. I cannot say, I cannot pronunciate them. To be honest, they're kind of hard. So I'm trying my best. <coughs> On a cold day when the snow blew onto the window panels and the light was dim, I asked grandma about the dirt in her feet. She told me she didn't have the shoes after her mother and father died. She wanted shoelaces to the mountains to tend to the family field. She ventured into the jungle to look for wild roots, bamboo shoots, and elevable mushrooms. And one day she was chased by a tiger. As she fled, her bare feet broke open on the fall branches. And she still ran, blood and dirt mixed into clay with each step. I squeezed her feet in my arms and pulled them close to my heart. A hug for the hard road she walked to get to me. Each year, cutting my grandma's nails went faster because I grew stronger and bigger and more, more able each year. Grandma's feet felt smaller and smaller in my hands and my lap. Her stories, too, slower with the passing years. The pause between her words grew long. Sometimes as Grandma was looking for words, she lost to the years. I grew distracted from my task, looking at the toys on the floor that needed to be picked up, the unfinished schoolwork, the young children who needed to be bathed, her deep, even breathing would call me back to the moment, only to find her eyes closed in sleep. One hand branched against the window to cradle her head. I grew unhappy with our life. I was tired of getting ice cubes from the freezer when I wanted ice cream. I was tired of never getting the new dress for that first day of school. I was tired of grinning on the bone in the soup when I wanted meat for myself and my grandma. One evening, I studied my face in the bathroom mirror, wishing my teeth were straight. I came out of the bathroom and said, Mom and Dad, I want braces. Can I have them? My mother looked up from nursing my baby sister and said, We don't have any money. Maybe next year. My father looked up from my toddler sister and he was bouncing on his legs and said, I wish we could get you braces, my nibble, but we can't right now. My grandma looked up from her special stool by the big window. Kyla, she said, look at me. I turned to her in the glow of early evening. The sun was low in the sky and a golden light fell on her face. Grandma asked, is my smile not beautiful? In that moment, I could see all the times my grandmother had smiled at me. I could taste the cold ice cubes that melted summer heat from our tongues, the sweetness of the ham, peppermint candies, and the deep flavors of the bone broth and the bowls of the boiled grains. Even now, I can still see my grandma single too, white against the shadow, standing tall in her open mouth. Her smile was the most beautiful thing. The end. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this final book. I want you guys all to have a nice, beautiful day, and bye.